All right, so today's video is going to be a little bit about adding actions for logging your activities. I have a lot of customers that start to use Salesforce, and activities are a big part of a salesperson, an operations person, marketing, delivery. Um, it's a big part of their day to day. And those activities typically roll up to company goals. So it's good to be able to categorize activities and loop them into reports so you can see at a high level, hey, what kinds of activities are we engaging in that are leading to the end result that we want, whether that's closed business or a project delivered on time. Um, and you know, even more so or at a higher level, how many activities are we engaging in every month and what's the propensity for those activities to convert? You know, how many activities do I typically have to log per day in order to get two or three of the end results I'm looking for. And so you'll do that in the activity panel for Salesforce. This log a call button is out of the box. And you'll see here that I can have a subject. You know, I connected with Andy Dick Dickinson and we had a few comments. You know, he was very interested today. And so when I save that, it's going to get added to my timeline. I can see my subject here, and if I expand that, I've got my description underneath. However, this out-of-the-box set of fields is pretty simple. It doesn't allow me that categorization that I'm looking for. Some people will say, like, hey, you know, I want to know if my employees are on site or just making phone calls, or perhaps they, it's a meaningful activity and there's quite a few notes, so they want to indicate that along the way. Being able to edit this box requires you to create a new action. So that's what we're going to go into, into today. Before, or without any further ado, let's jump into setup and do that. Setup will open. We'll jump in our quick find box. What we're going to create is a global action. So we'll jump into global actions. You can see a number of them here. There's our log call one. The reason we're not editing that is Salesforce actually keeps it relatively standard. So we want to invent our own new one that's a lot more flexible. Create a new action. What we want to do is set log a call. You can play around with this a little bit later because you can create actions for a number of things. Logging a call, and the real distinction is I'm indicating that this action is complete and it's complete today and it's complete by the user who's logging it. So most important, you know, your employees are completing activities that day or responding about what they've been up to in that day. What we want to do is set a label. I'm going to do log activity. It's pretty standard and would work in most cases. You can put a description if you'd like uh, and a success message, but I'm going to leave it blank. The success message isn't needed. When you log that activity, it's going to appear in the timeline. That's pretty good and would be redundant otherwise. So now I've created this activity, it's going to take me to my layout. And that's what appears in a row. You just saw it with subject and then comments. So it's looking relatively the same out of the box. We want to add a few things to this. So we've got our subject that'll be at the top. We've got some comments. I definitely want to show the date. So I'm going to pull date in here. And these will show up really just in line, uh, so there's no point in having the two column layout here. So I just, for the sake of ease, have added them in a row. And I think that out of the box, that's going to be pretty much everything else. Actually assigned to is the user that is logging this activity, and it's good to see that. So we've got our subject line, it's a text field, we've got some comments we want to add in, the date, which will default to the date it's logged, assigned to, the user that's accessing this, again it's a default, the name is going to be the contact or the lead that we're looking at, and then related to is that nice field where we can relate this back to objects like opportunities or accounts or projects. And we want to add a few more for sure, but they don't appear in this view. So the next step is to go and edit our task so that we can have a few more fields available to us. So let's go ahead and save that. This log call activity, the underlying object, is really just a task here. So what we want to do is jump into our object manager, navigate to our task, 
and then look at some fields and relationships. Notice that unlike other objects, there's actually not a button to create new. That's solely for tasks and is unique to tasks. It's because tasks and events are kind of coupled together under this parent object called activities. Just for you know, sake of transparency, I wanted to share that. So we'll move into ob objects and we're actually going to find our activity. Don't worry, we'll return to tasks in no time. So we jump into this activity object. We've got fields and relationships here. You can only see one on my list It's because I've created it. You'll probably have a blank list in front of you. Now is where you want to think about what kind of descriptors or criteria you want to capture for your employees about the activities that they're engaging in. To me, it comes down to two pick lists, but I've seen people do you know, a whole range of things and it's going to be unique to the business. So just know that as you create these fields, depending on what you want to accomplish, you can just add any number of fields to this task. Um, I'd be wary and cautious against the fact that the simpler that you can keep it, the better, because you want to make it easy to adopt and you also want to make it easy to report on. So I picked these two fields and I think that you'll kind of like them as well, where our first is going to be a pick list of the call result. And so we can call this just result, capitalize that, and enter some values. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're engaging in an activity, there's really two high level outcomes. We've connected and we're now sharing or discussing information. Or it was an attempt and nothing had been made. We left a message or we showed up and knocked on the door and nothing came from it. And so another option, and it's typically just a best practice, is to leave an other field in case something random had come up. It's good to give users the ability to choose other if they'd like. Um, going to display the pick list values in this order. I don't want to use any default value. It's okay. I'll allow people to select it. You can make this required if you'd like and enter descriptions so that people know what to enter. But for the sake of ease here, I'm going to click next. I've now created this custom field. I'm going to make it visible to all of my users. If you want to set security on this, this is the kind of page where you would, but for most people in the video, visible should work. We'll go next. I want to just add this to tasks. Again, remember that activities holds events and tasks within them. So tasks is really what we're working with here. So I'll click save. And now I've created a new field called result. Now the second field that I want, and I've already created it here, but you go through the exact same process to create a pick list field, is channel. And so within channel, I want to have a few things. So we've got our high level result. Did we connect or did we not? And then underneath it, what kind of activity was this? Was it an on-site meeting? Was it a message? Uh, was it a call, you know, picking up the phone? Or was it some sort of social media interaction? So I've created four values here. Again, totally up to your discretion. But I've got two that I want to add to our task. And so we'll, had, we'll head back to the actual um, <clears throat> task object. And we want to make sure that on the task page layout, we see those two options. So when I jump into the layout, I notice that I've got channel up here that isn't appearing. So I'm going to bump that down to just underneath. And then I've got my result. Result is actually already attached because Remember when we clicked event and task, it added in. Whatever fields you've created should probably auto-populate as well. But in case you wanted to check, we'll click save. And now we want to go back to that global action and add them to the layout there because as we noted, there were a couple of fields that we hadn't created yet that we needed to add. So we see our act log and activity. Again, click into layout. Now we can see a few options. The first of which I want to show up is our result. So we've got a subject. We'll add some comments. Actually, you might want to put result above. And then the channel, the type or style of outreach, and then comments. And again, the other fields that we've already created. So I'll click Save. And now we've got a global action.
those actions can be added to any type of object. For this case, we've got Andy Young, which is a contact. But once you've created that global object, you can really just add it to anything. I recommend out of the gate, adding it to lead, opportunity, contact, account, and perhaps projects as well if you're working with that object or a number of custom objects for your business. So we'll jump over to contact and add it to the layout. Contact the layout. And down the right or down the left side here, I've got mobile and lightning actions. These are our action buttons, and voila, our global actions appearing as an option. We'll scroll down and put that into the lightning experience actions box. Now, the order that you put them in will be the order left to right they show up. I want log activity to be the furthest most, most left, and by, na by nature, it's also the default tab that will appear for my users. Once I've done that, I'll click save and now it's been added to my contact. Let's go back and refresh our page to see our new button, Log Activity. Awesome. When they create new activities here, we've got a subject that we can set as connect, um, connected with Andy, and I've got my result, of course connected, my channel, this was an on-site meeting with Andy, uh, he's pumped. And I can relate this to an account or opportunities. Once it's saved, boom, I've got my activity in the timeline. Now one thing that'll appear, or it's good to note, is that we want it to show up kind of like this, showing in our compact layout that there was a channel that we had spoken on that we related to a certain business and the description. This is the end result, and I'll walk you through the process to get that to look like that. But you'll notice that in yours, when you log calls, it'll probably just be the subject and the description underneath. So we edit that in a thing called compact layouts. So again, we'll head back to our setup screen. And we're going to go to the object manager for tasks. Because again, this is the task object that we're really working with. and I want to scroll and see compact layouts. You'll likely have just a system default here. So what we want to do is create a new layout because the default is just that subject and description that we don't like today. So you can name this anything you'd like. Now activity, compact layout, I've already created one so I'll just call it activity layout. And here's where we select the fields that would show up. Now first, I probably want my subject there again in order. I want my result to show underneath that and then channel is important to me. I also want to show what it's related to and you'll notice that there's nothing in here that shows comments. Don't be uh, worried about that. It's actually just by default the comments will show up in your compact layout so you can just leave that as is. If you've added any other fields, ensure to add them there. We can save the last thing you'll want to do is activate that compact layout. So we'll look at the compact layout assignment. Go ahead and edit your primary compact layout assignment to now. Mine's called activity layout. You'll move it from system default. Press save. And now when we go back to our page, you'll notice that when you log a new activity, It's going to show our results. Press save, and I've got it all showing up here. I've got my channel, a related to a description appearing within the window. I hope that this has been helpful for you and that you're going to be able to use this to run some interesting reports, and allow your users a way to quickly log the activities that they're engaging in day to day that ultimately roll downstream or upstream into the end goal of the company, whether those be closed opportunities, executed on projects, cases that are closed within a certain period of time. Thanks and have a great day.